I think the um, stitching found me. I um, This was something that I never imagined myself doing. Um, it's like I haven't got time to hand stitch. That was, that was my thinking. Um, there's so many other ways in which I had wanted to express my creativity and stitching and all the beading work that you can now see in, in some of my work, all the detail stuff, it was just like, I haven't got time for that. Um, and so I say it, it found me because one day I had just decided to, um, I think it was when I was making my first fabric wall hangings. One of the things I, I really like about doing these um, wall hangings and I've, I've just made some these are the largest ones I've done so far but I decided to go bigger big because of the effect that you get um, yeah obviously if you're kind of using a lot of small beads it's gonna take um, a lot longer for you to complete the um, piece of work but I guess I feel it's worth it the amount of work it takes the end result that you get, I, I think it's, it's definitely worth it. It's such a, a beautiful thing when you see it, the, the finished piece hanging up. It's about expression. And something that I have to keep reminding myself is that, you know, when I'm, specifically when I'm, you know, painting like a scene or, um, that it's about my expression, my story. It's not about what other people expect to see. And so, I started to look at the fabric in different in a different way in that it was going to be a way in which I could express myself and all I needed to do was to listen to how I felt and that was important how do I feel about this piece not not whether I liked it um, that doesn't come into play I see in the same way I see the paint and adding backgrounds that's the same way I see this process so the stitches the colors that are used are almost like paint in themselves and I just need to follow um, my intuitive spirit that might say oh hey that's enough of that or Mm, it's still not feeling quite right, it needs something. And then I might immediately think about the thing that's needed, like um, in this particular piece that I'm doing, I had thought it was finished and I've added the wall hanging bit and I've done the bit on the back with my name and details and I thought it was finished and when I took it out it was saying no we need we need something that's in one of those containers and in my containers I keep all my kind of like pieces to add on to the fabric so pieces of jewelry beading and a whole load of other things and um, yeah I just it what I was feeling was that it needed some sort of leaf um, so the garden for me is really important but it, it needed some sort of leaf and um, some other bits that I've added since and uh, it also felt that it needed additional stitching and so that's what I'm doing here and with every stitch it feels more complete the fabric goes through a variety of different stages and once it's been initially painted they're pieced together so these pieces um, what I've done is create images, so some have images and the ones in this particular, 
they're all in different containers. These are ones that are to be stitched. So this one has gone through the process of it's been painted, an image has been painted on their face and it's been stitched and it now needs to go to the next stage where there are additional pieces that may be put on. I allow myself to be inspired so I don't say to myself okay right this piece now um, you know I need to add the back in I, I wait and see whether I'm going to be adding beadings or I might have additional pieces of material that have been brought together that need to be added to this so I allow this to kind of sit and wait so among some of the other pieces loose images are painted on the fabric this has been gessoed and a loose image has been painted and it's gone into the box of to be stitched so this has got some stitching on already so I'm deciding whether it needs additional stitching so all of these have gone through some sort of um, they've had loose stitching on them and you can see that on the back and I wait to see what image development now needs to take place so this is an example of one that I've created um, I've painted on the fabric I've stenciled as well and it now needs to have its initial stitching around the figure that I've got here it looks like a mother and child um, you can see some of the arms but again as I say I allow inspiration to come and so this one you can see the stitching on the back and that's even a nice um, part of the process as well to see how the the piece develops so as well as creating figures and images I also do abstract pieces so the abstract pieces can be quite a lot of fun as well because you get to bring together a wide a, you know a range of different materials and then you can arrange them as you want you can the vibrancy of the materials is also lovely but again I allow myself to be inspired to add whatever pieces need to be added and I sit with it I don't rush into it I take my time and some of the pieces are in a more advanced stage so these are the pieces that are in the, the pile that um, have been stitched and now this has been these are smaller pieces that have been painted and they've had hand stitching on and they're on the first stage of the backing now I don't traditionally quilt but I would put them on a, a, a backing piece of material like this but then what I also do is go in and add additional stitching so to add um, to bring these pieces into the piece of material that they're on and again they may have additional elements that are placed on so sometimes what I do is I gather some of the scraps and put them together and then they can become um, focal pieces as well that might then go into the main piece I've taken lots of smaller pieces and brought them together and then I create the larger piece. So I also have a box that is a collection of pieces that have gone through the machine stitch and they're now waiting to be hand stitched and they vary in terms of the design and what I like to do is sometimes I will just work on putting pieces of material together for the time when they're going to be stitched together so these have not these are um, African fabrics that I brought I mean put together and you know I mix the two so hand painted fabric with African fabric and then these have been machine stitched and now awaiting to be hand stitched so this is a nice activity where you're again gathering the fabrics putting them together and that's 
all part of the meditative process. There is no, it all has to be done now. You can do them in stages and that's what I do. And I also bring in some of the other elements like the ribbons and this one has had some beading on, but it's gone back in the to be hand stitch because there's other smaller um, stitches that I'd like to incorporate on here. And I've also added some sculptural elements, some metal that's been stitched. And that's, again, all part of the process, spending time finding the pieces that want to be together. And I don't force them, I don't force them together. I just allow them to sit for a while and they almost find each other. You know, if I, if you spend time allowing yourself to explore, then the pieces find each other. And then when you put them together, they just work. So the next stage for some of the pieces are to, to have additional stitching. Um, this has been um, batiked. And then I've gone in and added um, additional stitching and then this next the next stage for this piece would be to have beading added and I'm exploring um, ribbons different types of ribbons and it's got to then have its back in. This is one that I've been working on as well so I've added some additional hand so stitching. I've gone in with lots of smaller stitching and it's um yeah it's lovely to work on so i don't restrict myself i i i leave the needles in there so that i can just go in and start on this particular piece when i'm ready go with how i feel that i want to work on a piece and i just allow myself to do that so if i'm if i'm feeling i want to work with beads or i want to work with a particular color then I would just go ahead, I've got the pieces, and I'll, I might then see a particular one right to the end, um, but if it's nearing like completion like this one is, and I'm thinking, okay, it's got everything that I feel it needs to have, and actually, yeah, that's the way it should go. And um, all I've got to do now is these particular embellishments that I've put on is again to, to add them, to stitch them and add some additional stitching up here and then add a backing and decide on maybe some sculptural elements that need to go on or the um, or the wood that I may incorporate Hmm, actually that looks quite good. This is Moringa wood and I would have spent a session create designs on the Moringa wood. So this particular piece was one, it was painted fabric and I've spent time um, going in with more stitching and the stitching process is a really calming therapeutic process and that's something that really it's inspiring because you can be thinking of um, so many things working out putting the world to rights in your mind so here are some additional pieces so I work in a smaller pieces so this particular one looks like it's nearly finished but it needs some what I felt was coming from it. Whilst it's quite busy, it needs some hanging beads here as well. So, so this is a larger piece that, again, is one that is nearing completion. So there's an amazing amount of detail on here that um, and these were all individual pieces that were brought together so there has to be some additional stitching around the edges and then it's got to be placed on another piece but um, 
yeah, I love the way they come together. So here is one of the faces, the fabric pieces that then have additional, um, that has faces applied, painted, and then it is stitched. So these two pieces and then additional beading is placed on here and again part of the meditative process finding the beads picking out the beads um, and selecting them and then adding them to the piece you have to take your time so i used elements of the fabric there's a history within that, um, even if it's my own or family or whoever's worn the pieces of material. And then I've used um, dyeing techniques and painting on fabric. Now the thing for me that is most, um, is really most important is the wood that I've taken. So the wood uh, comes from cotton that I've grown in my garden and moringa trees. So at the bottom here we have the wood from the moringa trees and I have you know, wood burned um, and then applied other elements to them. But the uh, cotton uh, also done some wood burning on that. And we know what the history of, of cotton is and it's bringing all of these together and how you know, the richness of our, our heritage prior to being enslaved and brought um, in this piece kind of speaks to me it's about strength it's about um we've got elements of sculpture here with that was wrapped in cloth and wrapped in rope and then it's got um, metal on it as well and it's it's again just how all of these elements come together and tell a story and have a meaning and it means a lot to me to be able to combine these elements together, whereas at first, I, you know, as a mixed media artist, I love bringing together different elements and expressing um, uh, expressing myself in this way. So it was um, it was one it was a, a piece of work that because I'm a self-taught artist, I was able to not only be able to follow the rules but break the rules and make it up as I went along and you know show a bit of the things that I wanted to bring out into, into the work. So I was really pleased with this. I, it made this like a meditative piece as well because of the time it took to do each individual stitch and, and put them all together. And then also the wood burning elements and, and then arranging them as sculptural pieces on, on the overall wall hanging. So this was a really uh, special piece for me because it was, it stretched me and it made me come out of my comfort zone, but then also make it my own.